We're making some Christmas decorations today with, I've got my 10 year old grandson in the shop with me today and he picked out a snowflake. We went through the different design uh, functions with him and he actually carved it out on the CNC machine. The only thing I did, kind of guided him a little bit step by step and he did all the work. So let me show you how we did it in the process that we went through for him to make this snowflake Christmas decoration. We went to Google search to look for the snowflake and I just typed in snowflake drawings for the black and white. Now I'm recreating this and I went back in to find the exact snowflake that he had picked out and I don't see it. But you can pretty much pick any snowflake that design that you want and bring it into the VCAR Pro. All you need to do is just copy the image, come back to the VCAR Pro and select paste and then you have the image. Now I'm going to slide it out of the way. I'm going to make sure it's highlighted and then we're going to do a trace bitmap. And we're going to come right over here to this icon, select it, and then I usually reduce this down to maybe two colors. Really doesn't make a whole lot of a difference. All these other settings I typically leave alone. I can preview this to see what it's going to look like. And of course you've got to have it selected inside of there. And then I'll preview it and I think that's going to look good. We're just going to hit apply and close it. And then for there I'll select this and it does actually look good. So I'm going to ungroup this now and we're going to slide this over and put the original right there. And this is the actual image that we created using the trace bitmap. I'm going to take the original one and just cut it. I don't need it any longer. I'm also going to highlight the square around the new snowflake and delete that. So now I'm left with the snowflake itself. So this is the image that we can work with. Now this is the exact same process that I stepped through with my grandson and quite frankly he did all the work. He did all the computer clicking and everything. I just told him what to be able to do. The next thing that we actually need to do is create this slot. That slot is going to allow us to be able to make two snowflakes and slide them together into one. And it's a real simple process by selecting the rectangle tool. I need to change the thickness of this on the y-axis to the 0.212, which is the thickness of the plywood. And make sure that it's the full length from the center out to the edge of the snowflake. And then I could just drop it down in there, just like the one that you see in the uh, image there. The only thing that's left, really, is to be able to put these dog bones in. The dog bones are necessary because you want it to be able to slide all the way through. To do that, we're just going to select the fillet tool. We'll type in the radius of my eighth inch bit. And then I want to be able to select the dog bone icon right there. With that selected, then I can come over and add the dog bones into this end. And when you see that little check mark, just click the mouse and you can put the dog bones in. Just that easy. This is not a complicated process. And quite frankly, my 10 year old grandson did all of this. And then we slid it down where it goes right there on the center line. And from there, just cut away the end points. Just trim this. It joins it back together so you have a complete file. So I'm going ahead and cut this now and this quite frankly is ready to set up the toolpaths. From here I'm going to move over to the toolpath tab and we'll set up the one toolpath to be able to cut this out. And the only toolpath that I need is this one right here. This is the profile toolpath and since I've already created it I'm going to double click right here and take a look at it. So at this point, we're going to start at the zero start depth on the surface. We're going to cut down 0.212 of an inch, which is the full thickness of the plywood. We used an eighth inch end mill, and I want to have this set for two passes. Cutting this on the outside, and then we're going to move down, and we're going to use the ramps. The ramps just make it a little bit easier for the bit, so we'll set that up, and then from there, We'll come down and name this, whatever that you want to name it, and we'll hit calculate. And this is what it's going to look like. You can see all the tool paths there. I'm going to reset this and select the um, preview all the tool paths, and you can see how that cuts out. I can also double click this outer edge, 
remove the waste material and you can see exactly what the finished tool path is going to look like and have a nice beautiful snowflake. Of course we're going to make two of these so that they'll slide together. And what I'm going to do is take the original image that we had done together and I'm just going to slide it out of the way for a moment. And let's put this brand new snowflake in and we'll just bring it in fact, I can just do it real easy. Let's just put it right there and put it in the center. That saves us a step. So we'll close that. And now I want to come over here to the tool that allows me to set the size. And I'm going to keep this oriented around the center. And I'm going to make this um, linked together so it stays in proportion. And I'm going to take the larger size and we're going to set this at 11 0.75 and there's the new snowflake and that way it keeps it within that space that we need on our 12 by 12 material. The next thing I need to do is put that slot in there. You remember we have a slot right here so that the two snowflakes can slide together to make one. So this is a real easy process to do by just coming over here to the rectangle tool, selecting the rectangle drawing it in, and then I need to set the height of this at 0.212. That is the thickness of the material that we're working with. We'll close that, and we'll just set this right down on the center, just like that. From there, we need to be able to use the cut tool, and we'll cut all this excess away. You want to make sure that this is selected right here to rejoin the trim sections so it's a complete joined file. It's a closed. So that is it. Last thing we need to do is add the dog bones. If you see on the original image here, we have the dog bones. And that way the two pieces can slide together easily. So we need to add the dog bones into this. To do that, We'll just come right over here to the fillet tool, select the radius of our eighth inch tool, put that in, select the dog bone fillet, and then we'll come over here and when you see that check mark, then you can just click and it'll create the dog bones. And then we'll close it. And that gives you a snowflake that's ready to be able to carve. All right, now, that we have this completely finished, let's go over and create the tool paths. So we just click this little icon right there. We move over here to this. I need to close this out. And we're gonna be selecting the profile tool path. So I'll select it. This is set for the zero start depth. We're gonna cut down 0.212. We're gonna use the eighth inch end mill and we do not need seven passes. So I'm gonna edit the passes. We'll bring the passes down with my grandson. I use two, so we're gonna keep with that. Set passes, we'll hit okay. Now I have two. Of course, we wanna cut this on the outside of the snowflake. The only other thing that we did is I added the ramps in here. Just makes it a little bit easier on the bit. And half inch is fine because this material is just so thin. Name this, whatever you want to name it, and hit calculate. And there's the calculation to be able to do the snowflake. That is exactly what we want. And I can reset all of this, select the, you can see it, and then I just double click that to have the uh, material disappear around it so you can see exactly what the snowflake will look like. From there, we can save this tool path and we can go out and cut a snowflake. Went ahead and renamed that for the second snowflake for Lucas. I'm gonna close this now. Let's go over and save this tool path right here. It's the only one that I want to save. And I'll come right down here and we'll hit save tool path we're going to go over here. This was the original snowflake that we had saved. Now I have the second snowflake in here that I can carve out. And so I'll hit save. And that takes care of it. 
So we'll close this and we'll head back over here to the design tab, back into the 2D view. And now we have both of the snowflakes in here. Last thing I want to do is save this file because I've created a real nice snowflake. I think Lucas is going to like that a lot. So we're going to come over here and select and hit save as. And then I've got the snowflake. I'm just going to put in the second. And then we'll hit save. And if we go back and look at our thumb drive, and I have a file that's set up for Lucas Projects, and you're going to see the original file that we saved with my grandson. And here's a second Snowflake file that I just created, that brand new one. So he'll be surprised when he sees that he has a second Snowflake that he can cut out. And we have the toolpath set up. There's the original one. And here's the second one that we can cut out for him. And I'm going to wait till he's back in the shop with me and we'll cut out this second one. I also showed him step by step how to use my checklist for the CNC machine. And he went through the checklist, did each item, and then checked it off. The last thing he did, of course, was select run job. So this checklist works extremely well. And he was able to go through each item and make sure that everything was done before move to the next step. And that include putting the new bit All in. Right, they're tight. Oh, it's tight. Okay. Following the checklist, he hit run job and the snowflake is becoming a reality. And it's really turning out quite nice. I'm real proud of what he had done. And he absolutely loved watching this whole process cut out. And it was great having him in the shop and I look forward to having him in the shop a lot more. Stand back by the CNC machine. You did the work on that CNC machine. I think that is so awesome.